Coming up next on the channel, some new Galeri products to review with you. Well, hey everyone, and welcome back to another Interstellar Modeler. What we're going to do in this video is take a look at some new products from Galeri. Uh, Galeri is a company that reached out to me last year to see if I'd be interested in trying out some of their airbrushes on the channel, and I did do that and also did a review. I'll go ahead and post a link to that review down below if you want to take another look at it. Uh, but I've been using their airbrushes ever since, and I've been pretty happy with them. They've been performing great. And uh, so when they reached out yet again to me to see if I'd be interested in uh, previewing some of their new stuff, uh, I agreed to do so. So they sent me four products here to look at. So what we got here is a siphon feed airbrush called the Mobius SP. It looks to come with a 0.3 to 0.5 millimeter needle. It'll be interesting to take a look at this because I've never used a siphon feed brush before. Uh, we've got this little product here which is a storage box for airbrush parts. Also have these metallic colored pens. Uh, these are markers that you can use to detail your models with and do some weathering with. And finally, this airbrush and compressor kit. This is called the Ambition Series Airbrush and Compressor Kit. It comes with both an air compressor, which is called the Serenaire GTS-06, and then we've got a, uh, an airbrush that comes with it, which is from their classic series called the C536. It looks to come with a 0.38 millimeter nozzle, which uh, should function as a general use airbrush. So ready to dive in with our look at these products? Let's begin with the compressor. All right, let's go ahead and get this open here now. And well, it comes with a quick start guide here, which uh, those are some basic steps here on how to connect everything together and some advice here to help out with beginners in particular, uh, giving some advice on how to spray and achieve different effects with your airbrush. Uh, some cleaning instructions for your airbrush as well. And then we've got some deep cleaning instructions and some assembly diagrams there. And then the rest of this is uh, in different languages. All right, so um, let's see. Let's go ahead and pull out the compressor first, which comes wrapped in its own plastic here. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at these four buttons. You've got one that uh, is designated for minimum pressure. One is for pressure increase. We've got maximum pressure and pressure decrease. The button in the center is your on and off switch. And there are these indicator lights here, uh, which will tell you the rated pressure from 15 to 27 PSI. And on this face here, we have a connection for your air hose, and we have the connection for the power supply. And this here, if we take the cover off, is another port here for a second hose. Let's go and set the compressor aside here and take a look at what else comes in the box here now. We have the power adapter. And then we have the airbrush. Again, this is the Galeri Classic CS36, uh, 0.38 millimeter. I think I said C5 before, but that's an S there. And uh, we've got a paint cup that comes with it. And we have these two here that go onto your compressor. These are actually holders for your airbrush. And they go on like this. And underneath here, they provide a hose. All right, everything is connected. And I should mention that they do include four suction cups here at the bottom to minimize movement on a flat surface. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the main button here. And we can see it's already preset to 21 PSI. So as I press the trigger to the airbrush, you can see that it turns off and on as you are spraying here. And uh, we can jump to the maximum pressure by just pressing that button. That goes up to 27 PSI. We can choose to decrease in increments by pressing the side button here and vice versa if we want to increase. Or if we want to just jump to the minimum pressure, we just press this button and it jumps down to 15 PSI. So the compressor is actually pretty quiet. And I do like the way it turns on and off this way. My current compressor does not have that capability. Now before I go on, I wanted to point out that uh, one unique thing about the Galeri airbrushes is their air nozzle design, and they have two designs. The one that comes with this particular airbrush is now is the eight channel micro airflow design. And that's opposed to the spiral micro air design that comes in their Mobius line. And I've tried them both. Uh, they both spray really well. Uh, I, I personally like the spiral micro air channel design, particularly when I'm spraying busts or trying to get finer lines. But this design does a fairly decent job as well. 
So I'm starting out here at the defaulted 21 PSI and I'm immediately noticing a nice even airflow and paint application. And that flow stays consistent as I decrease pressure on the trigger allowing a lighter emission and thus allowing me to create finer lines. Let's go to the lowest pressure now which is very useful with making those finer lines and for applying softer tones which would be great when spraying on shadows and highlights. Alright, well let's go to maximum warp here, and again, the airflow is nice and even, and you can see how easy it is to get a great even spray across a diffuse area. And going to the decrease pressure button, I can switch back to the defaulted 21 PSI. So I have been curious about how well these small compressors match up to larger compressors and I have to say I'm impressed with this one. It uh, was easy to use. I do like the way you can easily um, manipulate the PSI by just touching these buttons and how you can jump from low to high settings like that. So uh, very, very easy to use. If you are just getting started with airbrushing, this is something to consider because again it does come with an airbrush. So I believe it runs for $69 on the website there and uh, so take a look at that because if you um, are just getting started um, and Anything to make airbrushing easier for you um, certainly can, can help you become more confident. The other thing too is if you're limited in space, you can see this is a very small footprint and easy to pick up and move around. Uh, so the portability is something that I do see working out for me. If I do have certain materials I'm airbrushing with, like the Alclad paints, I don't use those very often, but uh, you know, even here I have a lot of ventilation set up. I can open up the garage door. It would be nice to be able to just relocate outside and spray them out there uh, and not have to worry about being enclosed in any, any space whatsoever. And just in case, by the way, you're wondering what I use now, uh, this is the Sprint Jet from Iwata. I've had this for many years. It's performed really well. It's continuing to, uh, to do its job. Uh, but you can see, just to show you the difference in footprint here, as well as just portability, um, how uh, this could potentially work out for a lot of people if you don't have a lot of space uh, or you want something that you can easily move around. So uh, I definitely plan on using this uh, from time to time on some projects here on the channel. I'll keep you updated on how this is going along. In the meantime, let's go ahead and take a look now at the airbrush that they've sent, the Mobius SP. All right, let's go ahead and move on now to the Mobius SP. This is their siphon feed airbrush from their premium series. And as mentioned at the beginning of the video, I've not used a siphon feed airbrush before, so it prompted me to look up some potential advantages for using one. And the one that stands out is an obvious one in that you'll have uh, larger amounts of paint available for you to spray because a bottle holds more paint than a cup in a gravity feed airbrush. So this of course could be a convenience for you if you have a larger project to work on, you have larger areas to apply paint to, you'll have more paint readily available. Another possible advantage is that you don't need a separate mixing container. So there's potentially a little waste that goes on there as you're pouring the uh, paint into a gravity feed. There's always some paint left behind in that cup. Uh, you can do all your mixing in a bottle. And another advantage I could see is that if you had multiple colors to switch between as you're painting, uh, you could have multiple bottles of the different colors readily available to you that you can easily switch between. All right, let's go ahead and open up and see what comes inside. Uh, first, we have a little notice here from Glary saying that the airbrush has undergone stringent tests before leaving the factory. Uh, we've got a quick start guide here. So these are instructions, uh, just giving you some instructions on how to put the paint in the container, uh, adjustment instructions. Same as with the compressor, you've got some advice on how to attain a perfect spraying effect, as that says there. Some information about the two different size needles that come with the brush. And we got some assembly and some care instructions, and of course the rest are in different languages. Okay, we have some extra seals or O-rings here. And let's see now, let's go ahead and take out the bottle. This of course is the paint bottle. And we have the extra needle, which is labeled 0.5 millimeters, so the other one, so the brush contains then the 0.3. And this no doubt is a nozzle that goes with that 0.5. Label 0.5 right there. And here we have the airbrush itself. Comes in this two-tone color, which is cool. And we've got this re rectangular trigger here, which is supposed to be more ergonomic for you, providing a little more control as you grip it. And we have a regulator here on the back. So the bottle is gonna hook up to this front section here. So let's go ahead and get this connected to the mini compressor and see how well it works. 
All right, so I've mixed some paint in here, and uh, I have to admit I did not do that in the bottle because this is craft paint and I wanted to filter it, just be sure nothing gets clogged up here. But either way, we got the paint ready to go. Now, I'm not sure if this was an oversight on their part, but what's interesting is it came with a quick connector valve here versus a standard one where you just screw on your hose. Now, luckily I have a quick connection here, so that's not a problem. Just make sure that you have one if that is attached to your airbrush. And by the way, I did want to point out that since this airbrush is from their Mobius series, uh, as is standard with all the Mobius airbrushes, it comes with this spiral micro air design for the nozzle versus the standard air channel design that are seen in the other series. And by the way, these can be put into any of the other airbrushes as well. All right, so again, this is the 0.3 needle and I'm starting out at the minimum pressure of uh, 15 PSI here. And the airbrush is showing pretty good control here as I'm varying the intensity of the emission by varying the pressure on the trigger. And I thought I'd go ahead and insert the 0.5 needle and here I am at a lower pressure and boosting it up to the maximum 27 PSI. Well, just some final thoughts now about the Mobius SP before I move on to the other products. I thought the airbrush performed really well. The trigger mechanism is similar to what I've been used to using now on the 0.2 and 0.3 Mobius airbrushes from their premium series as well. The, you can see the trigger mechanism is the same, so I wasn't surprised that it worked well in that regards. Um, now, certainly you can see some advantages to using this if you work on larger projects. I personally don't think I'd find much need for having a siphon airbrush because I just don't work on projects that large, but I can certainly understand if you are um, having to spray a lot of paint how convenient it would be to have a larger reservoir like this. Um, cleaning the airbrush, however, was a little bit more involved. Um, you know, with something like this, uh, it's very simple to just do some backflow and uh, get some of that paint out there and then rinse it through with water and, and some uh, airbrush cleaner. And you can also look into this opening here to see if there's any paint left over in that little area there. Uh, something that you can't readily do uh, with this. I had to, of course, clean out the bottle, make sure, I also had to make sure there was no paint left in that tube uh, that feeds the paint through this section here. And uh, of course, the paint has a longer path to follow, so you gotta be sure that you're cleaning that path all along the way here, and uh, it's not easily visible whether or not you're getting all the paint out here. Um, I just made sure I used a plenty of water and some airbrush cleaner to, to clean that through. Uh, but I did find that process a little more involved. So as with most tools, it really comes down to what your needs are and how those tools can meet those needs. And is this something that fits a need that you have? Take a look at their website and check it out. So let's go ahead and wrap up the airbrush products with this here. This is a storage box that Galeri now has designed to help you organize your airbrush parts. Now when you buy a kit like this one here, this is their GHAC98. Uh, this kit comes with two size needles, nozzles, and air caps. And if you're not careful, you can easily misplace these parts and confuse them, especially if you don't have the room to keep them in this package that they came in. Uh, this particular box now is designed with a foam insert that has these slots to hold these particular types of parts. And uh, you have cutouts that are specifically designed to help you organize them. And it comes with a little legend here that tells you what each of these slots or openings are for. So uh, what I have here now is I've put the 0.5 needle nozzle and nozzle cap into here. This is from that kit here. You can see the top slot here is for the needle. We've got the nozzle cap here and the nozzle. And then we have now three additional openings for nozzle caps. And then when you look at the inverse side, we have the exact same here with a slot for a needle and nozzle cap and nozzle there. Now you might be asking yourself, how many air caps can you possibly have or need? Well, there are multiple air caps and there are multiple ones that are designed uh, besides the standard air cap. Uh, here's one example. Uh, we've got one here that has six holes and uh, this particular nozzle cap is designed to help with smoother sprays and so I've installed it in my 0.2 Mobius since I often use this for fine details. And that's versus this one here which is a standard that has no openings. And the box by the way does include these little labels so you can keep them straight. I can tell you once they're out of these little packages here it really is hard to tell what they're for. So as you interchange these parts, you now can have a place that you can keep them stored and organized as you use them. Okay, well the last product to share with you here are these acrylic markers and these are specifically designed to help with weathering and detailing. And the first type of model that comes to mind for me are Gundams and Mechs, which I honestly don't have a lot of experience building, but uh, this is a kit that my daughter uh, bought for me uh, while she lived in Japan. 
And you can see that, uh, that most mechs have a lot of sharp edges. And uh, those are certainly points that would be prone to wearing away of uh, surface paint, colors, and details as they went through different environments and battles and so forth. Now one way to achieve that look, and I've seen these in hobby stores, is by using these types of markers. And uh, these come in a variety of colors that you can see here. And uh, no doubt they can match up to the variety of equipment, metals, and surfaces that you'd find on a multicolored battle suit of armor. Another use for these could be detailed areas such as you'd find on Star Wars ships. And you can use them to uh, color wires, piping, or just apply fine weathering along sharp edges. So let's go ahead and open this up and you can see all the colors that come with the kit now, the different markers. And uh, there's a certain way that you activate them. Let's go ahead and um, pick one here. You got to shake it first and you open it up and you want to press down on this nub. Now it's not like it's going to cut you but it is a bit of a sharp edge there so I'm going to go ahead and, uh, or a sharp point, I'm going to go ahead and uh, press it down like this to allow air through. And then we're going to turn the marker on its tip and press it down until we see paint come through the tip. So now that the uh, paint is flowing let's go ahead and uh, try it on this surface here. I'm just going to glide it along the edge and I won't do a continuous line because we do want it to look like it's weathered or chipped away. And you can get some nice precise application like if you wanted to color in these buttons for example. Let's go ahead and use one of these copper colored ones. So yeah, really nice way of applying these types of details and no doubt I'll be using this on a future project as well. This kit comes again with 10 metallic colors and uh, is available on the Galeri website. Okay guys, well that is going to be a wrap for now. I hope you enjoyed looking at these products and just a quick review here now or summary as we close. The air compressor I thought worked really well. I was impressed with it. Uh, the one thing I have read about mini compressors and that was one thing I was curious about uh, and I didn't mention earlier is that um, with smaller compressors like this, because there's no air tank you're feeding into, the air is coming directly from the compressor, so sometimes you can get a pulsing effect uh, as you are spraying, and that's one thing I did not notice here. So if uh, you are uh, restricted in terms of spacing, uh, you want something with a smaller footprint, or you're just beginning because this comes with uh, an airbrush, and as I said, it's very easy to use, I think this is something that could fit the bill. Uh, the siphon airbrush, uh, I think if you are... Um, uh, someone who works with larger projects is, is something that you certainly could potentially find use in. Uh, this is something that I felt that worked really well. It, it compares to how the other airbrushes that I've used from Galeri. It is of that Mobius line, so the mechanisms are very similar and it performed just as well. I, as I mentioned, don't think that I would be using it th that often because I just don't work on projects like that. But again, this is something you might really want to look into. Uh, the other products were interesting to look at as well. The storage as well as the markers are something that uh, you might find useful. And this video now is being published right before Thanksgiving here of 2024. And as I understand it, Galeri is participating with Black Friday this year and they are running some specials all already on their website and they've provided some special links for you guys down below. So if you're interested in any of these, follow those links. They'll take you right to the site. All right, so as for what's coming up now on the channel, I might be able to squeeze in one more build. You know, I've had other commitments, particularly with work. I had a conference to have to go to. I just have not had time to start another build since the Halloween build, but I do have this smaller project I've been wanting to get started on and uh, it's not too complicated. So I think I might be able to squeeze that in before Christmas. We'll see. And uh, lastly, I do want to thank you guys for leaving the positive comments uh, about the last two Interstellar Academy videos uh, that uh, covered weathering. I do appreciate that. Uh, I intend to continue to uh, make those videos and post them on the channel as I come up with different ideas. And by the way, if you have anything you'd like me to cover, feel free to email me here at interstellarmother at gmail.com. All right, guys. Thanks again for watching. I do appreciate it. And I want to wish you guys all the best this Thanksgiving. Take care. And I'll see you in the next video.